Do we do some videos? Oh, Lucy, shall we do this? Okay, come on. Up. On your chair. Up. Good kill. <laughs> Alright, let's pull you over. Uh, try and get a center. Uh, you can stare out your window. Oh, good girl. How's that? Is that alright? Does that work for you? Awesome. I think I think we're in I think we're in shot. Alright. Hey guys, how we doing? Zach and Lucy here. Welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lane, the Queen of Balmain. As you can see, Lucy is fixated, staring straight out at that window because mum has just left to take herself on a walk without the dog because she has a conference call and we're gonna shoot a video. And Lucy's gonna go for a big walk after this. So all good, but she's feeling a little bit betrayed right now. She's like, God damn it, mum. Um, anyway, I digress, let's get into it. So. Today, guys, we are going to answer a question, uh, a common question that's been asked on uh, quite a few of Lucy's social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram. So we thought this could be a good topic to address. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Should I get a German Shepherd as a first time dog owner? So this is a common question, as I said, we've been asked quite a few times. And my answer to this is one word, research. So I've created a checklist on what you should research uh, when it comes to getting a German Shepherd as a first time dog owner. So the first question is, what is a German Shepherd used for? So I'm gonna give you a quick soldier's five on each of these questions as well, but then you can go do your own due diligence. So a German Shepherd was originally used for as a herding dog uh, way back when, and then they got integrated into military use in about 1890 uh, with a German general. I can't, I won't pronounce his name because I'll butcher it, but um, essentially that's when these guys come into line with military purposes. You all right, Luz? You're gonna flatten the grass. Okay, good girl, you lay down there. And that's when they started to really shine. And ever since then, they've been used as a military working dog ever since. Police dogs, um, they're used in correctional services, they are used as search and rescue dogs, they are used as companions, they are used as a large variety of different purposes. But their original core skills was herding and then military work. Now the next question you wanna ask is, what are the different types of lines when it comes to German Shepherds? Now there are five types of different lines when it comes to German Shepherd, German Shepherds plus a bonus line, okay? So let's just get into it. Alrighty, so Lucy is a Western German show line. So this is a, she's a show line dog, so she's bred to be aesthetically pleasing, but also, she is a bred to have characteristics of a working dog. So she's bred to, to be able to perform, but she's also bred to be aesthetically pleasing, uh, pleasing. so a really well-rounded German Shepherd. She's got the looks, and she's also got that working ability. Now that is a Western German show line. The next one is a Western German working line, and they are for, they're bred for pure working purposes. Um, they may be a little bit smaller in size, a little bit more agile, and they are very good at what they do. They're gonna have a dead straight back, and their longevity for working is probably a little bit better than a Western German show line. Now the next uh, line is a Eastern German working line German Shepherd. So when the East and the West got cut in half, split straight down the old center, um, the East went, bugger it, let's make our own German Shepherd. So, and they developed this amazing Eastern line German Shepherd, which is also a working line, and they are bred essentially for the same type of thing, but they're bred a little bit bigger and that to have a little bit more presence. So, probably not as agile as the Western working lines, but they are still a working line indeed with a bit more presence. 
And the next one is the check working line. So this is probably the rarest uh, line of German Shepherd that there is. And they started developing their own breed, or breed, own line of German Shepherd. And they used these types of dogs to patrol the Iron Curtain way back when. And in my opinion, I think they are the hardest uh, line to get. Also, have all the beautiful characteristics of the, of the Western and Eastern working line German Shepherds. Last, the second last one is the American and Canadian show lines. Now, personally, I would avoid getting one of these dogs for two reasons. One, genetic and health conditions. So these guys are bred for their aesthetic look. Um, yeah, a massive big kind of chest with a very angulated back and that small waist which is essentially not what they're supposed to look like. Hey, it may look cool, but it is, it is a lot of people say it's a lot of bad breeding, and in my personal opinion, it is. A German Shepherd is traditionally a working dog, and they should be able to do these things. So, um, and another part of that is they're almost trying to breed out the, the Schutzhound side of the German Shepherd. So the ability, the, the working side of it. So. That they don't essentially want to have the the guard dogging instincts, the attack dog, the working dog characteristics in this German Shepherd. They pretty much want it as a catwalk model. So, in my personal opinion, I would steer clear of that for two reasons: a, it doesn't have any person, any characteristics of a German Shepherd, and you're going to get a bucket load of hip problems, hip dysplasia, and arthritis probably uh, quite early on in life. So, but that is my personal opinion, and this is, again, not to offend anyone that has one of those lines of German Shepherds. Ah, God damn it! The battery died in the camera, so we just re, re did, did all that. All right, here we go, let's start that again. Loose. <laughs> just peering out the window there, darling. You all right? You all right? You all right, puppy? You okay? Into it. So, the last one is back the the backyard breeding line, um, aka this is this is not a real line of German Shepherd, um, but backyard breeding is something that does go on. So this is what I like to call the lucky dip, and this is probably the one um, up there with the American show lines that I would avoid. So the lucky dip, okay? So essentially, backyard breeding is when an inexperienced, or essentially when a normal dog owner and another normal dog owner go, hey, let's get our dogs to mate and let's pump out some pups and make a few bucks on the side or um, something along the lines of that. So number one, this is taking away from professional breeders' jobs and the, you know, the amount of due diligence that actually goes into it. So. With this, this breed, this, this line, essentially line, um, is a lucky dip. You don't know what you're going to get, um, genetically wise and temperament wise. So don't get me wrong, you may get a rocket of a dog, an absolute shit hot, hot shit hot, high performing, awesome dog. And there are plenty out there that come from backyard breeding. But also, you could be unlucky and get a dog that um, could be very fearful, have a whole bunch of genetic conditions. So look, save yourself the pain. Um, and you know, you might, well, the thing is, you can get these dogs a lot cheaper. You know, you may not pay very much for this, but um, you know what? It's going to cost you more in the long term. Alrighty, so guys, the next thing you want to research is breeders. Once you've researched the different types of lines and you've decided what line you want to go with, then it comes down to researching breeders in your country. Um, I do know of people who have imported German Shepherds from Germany, different parts of the world, but depending on what country you're in, that could be a bit of a hassle with quarantine issues, and especially if there's a long delay with quarantine, and your puppy has to sit in quarantine for X amount of weeks, um, sitting there scared and alone. Look, I'd probably avoid that option, but do your research on breeders around your country, around your area, and weigh up your options. Um, go meet a few breeders, meet some of the dogs, meet the parents, 
and start making a mental note of what you see and some pros and cons between both. But always go to a registered breeder, in my opinion, and someone who's done all of their due diligence. So, for example, a breeder that my wife and I went to, he's actually one of the best breeders in Australia. Um, if anyone would ever like to know where we got Lucy from, you can DM us on Instagram or shoot us an email. Be happy to answer that for you. Um, but he's one of the most round breeders in Australia for German Shepherds, and he's been doing this ever since he could work. And he's quite an old man now, so he's been doing this for probably about 60 odd years. So no one knows German Shepherds better than this guy, in my personal opinion, um, in Australia. So that's the choice that we went with. Okay, you right? Sorry, am I boring you? Sorry, Lulu, you just had a little snooze. So that's the choice that we went with, so I recommend you do the same. Do your due diligence with your breeders and research. So, research breeders. All right, so the next one is health. Make sure, make sure you research health. So with German Shepherds, they, are, they do have some genetic conditions. Now, some German Shepherds may never have a problem their entire lives, and other German Shepherds will. So these are some problems that can come up um, and it's not limited to. It is, you have the possibilities of hip dysplasia, <clears throat> which is a massive one, skin conditions, digestive issues and arthritis, just to name a few. Now, to minimize the risk of these genetic conditions, you would want to see an experienced breeder and stay clear of, uh, well obviously backyard breeding, and you want to stay clear of your American and Canadian show lines because especially with that line of dog, they have bred it so it's aesthetically pleasing but they've completely annulated the back and they've taken away, they actually cripple the dogs and I know countries around the world are outlawing that type of breeding. So if you are looking at getting an American uh, show line, just look, I'd highly recommend not to. Um, to save you a whole bunch of problems down the track. Now, no breeder can guarantee um, that your dog will 100% never have any of these conditions, but, um, and if they do, that's probably a warning sign not to go with them. But um, but with an experienced breeder and you know, like, a, like a, working, a working line or a German Western show line, you minimize the possibilities quite a lot of having these health conditions later on. Now, German Shepherds can, you know, obviously, or well, big, large dogs in general, as they get older, can start to have arthritis and hip dysplasia. Um, that's something to be aware of, and that's just not German Shepherds. But, again, it's all about minimizing that risk, because, again, the financial toll on you, the emotional toll on you, and, you know, putting these guys through all that pain, it is really quite sad. All right, so the next one is, Male or female? Should you get a male or should you get a female German Shepherd? Here, there is no right or wrong answer. It comes down to kind of what you want, what's available, there'll be a few different factors there. But with a male, essentially they're gonna be a little bit more protective, probably a little bit more territorial, a little bit more stubborn when it comes to training, and they're gonna look up to one individual more. So they're gonna need a really strong leader, and they'll kind of tolerate everyone else. And that, that, that is a bit of a generic, kind of background of a male and a female. They obviously, they need a strong leader um, to look up to, that uh, they're a little bit more nurturing, they're not as territorial, they kind of really embrace everyone in the family. Not to say males don't, but this is just trying to give it a generic overview. Um, I've given a quite an in-depth overview in a video I'll link up here. Should I get a male or should I get a female German Shepherd? Check that out after this video. So yeah, these are just a few things you need to ask yourself as well. Um, now, the next thing you need to research is cost. I've also linked a video here. Um, you can see here, Lucy the $12,000 German Shepherd. Go check out that video. Um, that was done about a few months ago, but that's pretty much Lucy from when we got up to 18 months. Um, and I realized I left a whole bunch of other stuff out there. But cost is very important because you need money to have a German Shepherd and you need a little bit of it at least. So you're gonna have the initial outlay of the dog, which is around $2,500 I'd say, is a good standard price for a German Shepherd, and then it goes up from there. 
If you were to go the backyard breeding route, probably a thousand dollars. Now I'm just throwing these numbers out there. But you know, it's probably going to cost a lot more down the uh, down the end of the road. So with this cost of the dog, now this is just not by the dog and that's your one-off fee. There is ongoing costs. Like when you buy a car, you need to fuel it, you need to get you know, maintenance and that exact same thing with these guys. So look, honestly, I think um, set yourself aside when you get your dogs. Have, have available $10,000 for vet bills, your food or your insurances and all that stuff, that all adds up. And then have an, you're gonna have an annual tally running after that. So you're always going to need money to have a German Shepherd. As you know, money makes the world go round and you need money to have a car, you need money to have a house, you need money to do everything. So this is just like, a, this is another expense. So you need to factor that in. So if you're tight on money, I'd recommend not getting a German Shepherd at the current moment, wait till you're financially viable to do so. The next thing you need to research is actually take an inward look and have a look at your lifestyle, okay? What type of lifestyle do you live? Um, here's a quick one. If you're a fit, active person, that's, that's, a good, that's a good lifestyle for a German Shepherd. But if you're a couch potato, you like to mooch around, you don't like to do much on the weekends, yeah don't like to exercise, look, I'd recommend probably not getting a German Shepherd because these guys need a shitload of exercise and stimulation. So this is probably a really, like, first thing you should actually probably look at is what type of person am I? What type of lifestyle do I live? That will probably make a good answer to your question straight up. Alrighty, so the next one, the next thing you need to actually research about yourself and look inward is your personality. Are you an alpha and a leader or are you a bit more submissive? What I'm kind of trying to say here is a German Shepherd needs just a strong leader. They need to look up to someone for direction. What's that loose? Which, who's out there? They need to look up to someone for direction or they will take charge. That's all I'm saying. So you do not want, to want one of these guys taking charge of you and telling you what to do. Um, so that's something else to consider and that's a personal thing. You need to think, well, you know, can I, can I be a leader for one of these dogs? Am I strong enough? Am I strong enough as a person? So that's also something to consider. Now, another thing to look at is, and research is training and the time that you have. Oh, you just you just being such a lazy girl. So, training a time. So, look at the time in your day. Again, this can kind of, I suppose, come under a bit of your lifestyle, but obviously you're gonna need a little bit of time to spend with your dogs. These dogs do need a bit of time and they need a lot of training, especially at the start. These guys, thrive off training, you know, they're originally a working dog. They want to please their master. They want to be mentally stimulated. They want to work. So you need to give them that and give them that feeling of satisfaction or, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. They're just going to, you know, if, if they don't kind of achieve that within themselves, they become destructive and upset and angry and, you know, and it's just not good for anyone. So time and training and with training, I cannot stress the enough, um, stress enough the importance of investing into a good dog trainer. Now I was truly privileged to have, I say, the best dog trainer in Australia. Fantastic. Uh, Master of Puppies, shout out to Master of Puppies. You guys should follow them on Instagram. So head trainer there is Will and his beautiful canine Mia. She is like, she's the second in charge. But he was fantastic and I learned so much from him and every day I still apply the skills um, with Lucy, the things that I learned. And again, a trainer is more or less to train the human on how to train the dog, okay? So it's, we always, it's, it's, never, the, it's never the dog. The first thing you should look at dog training is, is the individual. So again, I can't stress enough training, invest in a fantastic trainer. Um, Again, if you want some great tips and stuff, check out Master of Puppies. They're fantastic. They have an Instagram, Master of Puppies Australia. Um, they're all ex-military working guys, ex-military working dogs, very experienced. 
Um, you don't get any more experience in that, and they cater for all dogs, and everything from new pups to your yeah, you're working a military style attack dog. So. so guys, in conclusion to this, um, if you can answer all of these questions appropriately, so yes, you have the time, yes, you have the funds, yes, you'll put in the effort, um, you know, yes, you have an active lifestyle, you know, you wanna, you wanna work in line or, or a Western German show line, um, and you're willing to do all of your due diligence properly, um, well then, I think a first time dog owner can have a German Shepherd. Okay, now this, this little summary that I've done is only the bare bones basics. So, obviously this is a good starting point for someone to go in and just start diving into the depths of, you know what, it is the internet. We all have the internet, so no one should have an excuse for not doing their due diligence before getting one of these dogs. So, look, in a nutshell, if you can answer yes to everything here um, and you've nailed it and you'll put in the work, you can have one of these dogs as a first time dog owner. Because at the end of the day, I'm a first time dog owner um, and this is our first dog and we've got a German Shepherd. So we didn't muck around, we, 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 we went straight for the high caliber um, and I don't regret a single thing. But again, this is something that I personally did myself um, and I actually did about 12 months of research as well. So just to top that off, that little bit of icing on that cake. So guys, my wife is here. She just got back from her walk. Lucy feels betrayed because Flip was at the park. But mum needs to go get some... Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, anyway. Um, wifey. What would you say, before we got Lucy, would you say it's pretty accurate to say I did about 12 months worth of research before we got Lucy? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Definitely. There we go. And don't, she will drop me in it if I didn't. So guys, there you go. Look, you don't have to do 12 months worth of research, but um, at the time we were in an apartment and we, could, we weren't able to have a German Shepherd yet. And so I literally had 12 months up my sleeve. But it is a good place to start. So use this as a guide. Obviously it's nothing official, but this is just from my personal experience. I think these, these things should be researched and you should look at this yourself and make your own decision whether a German Shepherd is right for you as a first time dog owner. Anyway, um, Lucy, I think you have a date with Phoenix. <gasps> Yay! You wanna go have a date with Phoenix? Play date? Nick a boogies? Boyfriend. Boyfriend. So, uh, a good friend of ours just got a new German Shepherd called Phoenix. His last lovely Shepherd, um, Rex, passed away, but he just got another rescue. So. Lucy and Phoenix get along like a house on fire, so that's fantastic. And we're gonna go on a little walk with them. Anyway guys, if you got something from this, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, shoot any questions through you, you'd like to know, that'd be fantastic. Um, if you could hit the share button, share it around, spread some love, put some hate on there if you want, that'd be fantastic, just adds to the bumping up and the old algorithm. And yeah. Oh! Did you get what? Huh? Oh yes! Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.